Hi everyone, I am out on a big rock, surrounded by sea, taking photographs of a sunset as the tide comes in. So some of these waves are starting to get pretty big, so I need to go pretty carefully that I don't get pushed off, cut off with a rising tide. It wouldn't be the first time I'd been caught out by a rising tide taking photos, so I'll watch you carefully. Now we've got a couple of minutes before the sun starts to affect the sky in the east. And if you see the colours on the horizon, they'll start going pink, pink and purple. And as the sun sets further to the west, the colour will start rising. And that's the time for my shot. So you can see it's starting to go very light pink here by some yellow. This pink will become orange and yellow and rise further up the sky. So two more minutes, I'll watch my light, I'll watch the tide. <laughs> Now, I made it back to uh, land, finally. Dry land, yay! <laughs> that was getting a little bit close for me. It just had a couple of minutes before I actually got cut off. I had a pool hop uh, from rock to rock, but I'm here. Be really careful when you're timing your, your photo shoot at night, especially around water, rising tide, particularly that was rising tide, that you don't get cut off. It gets cold at night, obviously with the sea air. I have no phone signal here, so if I'd got stuck in that rock, I would have been here all night, and that's, that's not safe. Watch what you're doing also with slippy rocks, seaweed, rising tide, falling light, expensive equipment on your back in one hand, because you've generally got a tripod in the other. It's pretty precarious and it's probably a recipe for disaster, so don't get caught out like I nearly did tonight. I nearly lost my life taking a photograph around sea one night, and I'll actually put the link to my Flickr site, which shows the image that I nearly succumbed to all in. I'll see that down, down below. Now I've got um, about 15 minutes, 15 minutes uh, to get back to the car. It is getting quite dark. I have come across this lovely little scene here with Carex grasses, New Zealand's Pahutakawa tree, and some lovely rocks in the sea beyond. It's not one for tonight, but I'll maybe come back here and take that during, during a sunrise. It's actually really pretty. Um, I will see you in a little while when I get back home, get warmed up, get some tea, and get the light room. So just I'll see you in a little while. Okay, that's me back from the beach. Now we ended up getting two really nice shots there tonight and the first one will go into my website. The second one we'll actually do during this, uh, this video. Now I didn't intend taking a video tonight and only took it because the light got so special tonight that the sky was just amazing tonight. The only video equipment I had with me was, or capable of taking a video, was my iPhone. So the choice I was faced with was take a video with the iPhone or don't take one at all. But because the light was so special, my choice was quite an easy one. Now we're going to go into Lightroom and we'll talk you through my workflow from start to finish. And we'll talk you through some global adjustments, some fine adjustments, looking at hue, saturation and colour luminance. And then we'll look at uh, the use of the brush, the radial filter and the graduated filter, which are three amazing, amazing tools in Lightroom and really make Lightroom so unique. They're so manipulable, they're awesome. We'll end up taking the final image into Photoshop to sharpen it off through Smart Sharpen because the Smart Sharpen tool in Photoshop is actually a better one, I think, than the one in Lightroom. And the last thing we'll do is we'll take and put a surround or a white canvas around the photograph just to make your image pop. So before I waffle on too long, let's get into Lightroom and let's see how we get on. Okay, so we're going to open up Lightroom and we'll maximize this. Now this is the raw image, the DNG digital negative file for the three shot panel that we shot earlier on. Now first things first you will see that I've got a dodgy white triangle up here which was actually caused by a dodgy horizon line. The dodgy horizon line was about me moving my camera from wet spot to dry spot from wet spot to dry spot as the waves came in and forgetting to level off my 
horizon lines and levels with my tripod and my self-leveling head. So, first things we need to do is we need to crop that out. So up to develop module. And we'll go up to the crop tool up here. And all I'm going to do is just drag this in to crop that out. Now I'm going to stop in between these rocks here. There we are. And normally I would leave, I would, sorry, I would crop this rock out, but I'm going to leave this in because I think it just adds a little bit of balance. So we've done that. Now, this image is much, much flatter than the colours were and the shadows were and the highlights were when I saw the photograph. But your eye and your brain are much more adept at seeing colour and dynamic range both in highlights and in shadows at the same time. So the highlights were much, much brighter and much more colourful than this and the shadows had much more detail. But all this dynamic range is actually lying in this raw file. So, first things first. Highlights. I'm going to bring down the highlights just to bring in some more of the colour within the highlighted areas. But watch this area here as I attack the shadows. So I'm going to erase the shadows and here comes the detail. So all this detail is here just waiting to be teased out. Okay. Now looking at my histogram, my histogram is okay so I don't think I need to mess around with my whites and my blacks. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise my clarity a little bit to start making a little bit of punch. Now, my workflow, I tend to go from the top of this module down to the bottom, from top to bottom, and that way I'm always consistent in how I approach stuff, but also I miss nothing. So clarity, I'm going to raise my vibrance just a little bit, but not too much. Now you'll see all the adjustments I do are very, very small because sometimes less is more. Now, three really cool tools. We've got graduated filter, we've got radial filter, and we've got the brush. And these are just incredible, incredible things. So first things first, graduated filter. See the cross, and I'm just going to drag this down. Now, the good thing with these things here is double tap to reset. If we hover over this live dot, it shows you what we're going to manipulate inside this filter and inside this filter only. So if I play around with settings inside this filter, it doesn't affect the rest of it, just what glows red when I hover over the dot. So this first filter, I'm going to lower the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to warm this filter up just a little bit. Because what I'm trying to do here is bring this photograph back to how I saw it when I was there. So we're just going to raise the exposure here, uh, the saturation, sorry, just a little bit. Now I tend not to load too much data into each filter. Although Lightroom is non-destructive, I tend to separate my adjustments through different filters. So this one here, always double tap to reset the values. I'm just going to warm this one up a little bit more and I'm just going to make the saturation a little bit. Now that looks really orange, but the sky was just beautiful when I took it. I'm going to done that. I'll take a third one and I'll make this one quite harsh. Now if we push shift, we can drag this and it stays absolutely flat. Once we've finished the setting of the filter, we can make sure we get the filter just how, how we want it. We can make it very gradual or we can make it a very hard filter. And again, by hovering over here, shows you what's going to be affected. So double tap to reset. And what I'm going to do with this filter is I'm going to add some magenta. Because there's some real magenta in and along the horizon line here. And let me just soften this off just a bit. Raise this up a bit and drag this up here. And again, I'm just going to attack the saturation to bring out some of the purples along the horizon there. A little bit more. Okay, that's getting pretty close. That's three filters in the sky, so I'm going to lay a couple across the sea. The sea is actually far too dark, so let me just snap that off, reset this. I want to raise the exposure a little bit, but I actually want to really attack the whites in the sea. So this was a long exposure and all the white here is the movement within the crests of the waves which were white in the photograph. I'm going to done that. I'm going to take another filter. I'm going to take this one quite high up. Reset this off. 
and I'm just going to raise the exposure the tiniest bit. I'm going to raise the whites again a little bit and I'm actually going to increase the clarity of this when I get some of the punch in and around the rocks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the blacks a little less dominant. Okay. A couple of things for me to do here is we see the ship. Now I took this at 160 mil, so it's a three shot vertical panel shot at 160 mil. I could see this ship and I wanted to bring the ship into the photograph. Now had I taken this with a wide angle lens I would never have seen this ship. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to raise the exposure slightly and we're going to go onto our first elliptical or radial filter. So we click on the filter, we drag and we draw. First things I have to do is reset this off. Now if I hover over this Again, the red part is the part that would get adjusted, but with a radial filter we have to invert the mask. So by hovering over this dot then I can see what's going to be adjusted within this filter. So, because I want the ship to be dominant, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to raise the clarity, which just makes it pop a little bit. I'm going to raise the whites to bring out the white in the cabin, but just watch the horizon line, and I'm going to just increase the saturation just a little bit to make the red pop. And I just want to sharpen this filter and only this filter up. Now if we think we can see the effect of that filter, I'm not sure we can. What we would do is we would go in, reactivate the filter, and if we think we can see the effect of the filter, we just make it a little bit bigger. And it just spreads it out, makes it more gradual. Now these filters are just incredible. So, next one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take another one and I'm just going to draw it across this rock. What I'm trying to do here is because the sun is coming over my left hand shoulder, I want to give the effect of the light bouncing onto the front foremost parts of this rock here. So let me just have a look and it's inside the filter only. Double tap this off and I just want to raise the exposure ever so slightly and I just want to warm this up ever so slightly. And we're actually in full control of how much effect we put into this filter. I think that's a little bit too much warm, so just take it back down. And if we right click on this, we can duplicate the filter. And I want to just move one over here. And then we can fully manipulate this filter exactly how we want. In this filter, so I'll add a little bit more clarity. There we are. Okay. Next thing is doing another radial filter, this time over this landmass here. Now this landmass I could not see with my naked eye, and the reason it's here is because I shot it with a 160mm lens. So over the landmass, the only thing that's going to get adjusted is the red part, so invert the mask. The red part's going to be adjusted, and all I want to do is play around with contrast, and I want to play around with clarity. Now what you can do as a real test is push your filter too far, take it right down and just slide back up to where you think it should sit and it looks right. And the same would be said for your contrast. A little bit too much, a little bit too weak. Where does it sit? It probably sits round about there. What I want to do in this filter too is I want to just take the saturation up, which will just bring some of the colour out in the sea, but also in the sky around here. Now I think that's probably about me. Now, when I took this photograph there was actually much more magenta in and around the horizon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another radial filter. This one's going to be quite big, so drag it and position it. Invert the mask, reset the mask off, and I want to adjust that part there. So, filter's too big, and we'll just drag this up that's probably the affected area round about there. And because this was much more magenta, I just want to add some magenta to this part of the image only. Doesn't affect the rest of it, it's just here. Now, that is pretty close. It was actually really purple on the horizon, and it was actually really, really warm and beautiful in the sky. Let me just shorten this off a little bit, because it's a little bit too far over here. And we'll move this a wee bit over to the, the right. Okay, I'm starting to get happy with that. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to have another look at the ship because the ship, I think, 
I'm just going to raise the exposure a tiny bit at the ship here and what I'll do is I'm just going to make this filter even bigger and even bigger to try and get rid of some of the effect of that being a little bit too obvious. Okay, now we've done one, we've done two, three, four, five radial filters and what I'm going to go to now is the brush. The brush is awesome and I'll show you why I love this brush just so much. Now this is the one where we paint with light so I want to try and attack the photograph where I see light naturally falling on some of these rocks over here. So I want to affect the exposure and I want to affect the highlights and I probably want to bring it up just in warmth a little bit and then we get the brush to the right size and I simply paint with light. And all I'm doing is just brushing in where I think the light would actually be falling on these rocks to try and bring out some of the detail that sits within the raw file. Do it over here, a little bit smaller. And these rocks over here even smaller. And it just makes some of the highlights pop a little bit. Okay, now the good thing with this here, we can see where we have painted. The really cool thing with this is that once we've painted and we think we've made a mistake, we don't have to discard the brush and start again, we can actually change all the values within this brush once we've painted it. So we then bring it back to where we think it should sit. And I think that's probably about it. I'm going to bring the warmth up a little bit and again, we can change the warmth within this brush completely once it's been painted. And I'm just going to increase the clarity the tiniest bit. Okay, now brush number two. What I want to try and do is create some effect between the rocks and where the sea meets. So reset it off. I want to increase the clarity just to make some punch around these areas here. So I'm just going to brush where the rocks join the sea just to make them actually very dominant. So just bear with me when I do this. And what I'll also do is I'll actually bring this up into some shadow areas up here just to give this some three-dimensional pizzazz or va va -voom. And you can see it's starting to make a difference here to this image already. And I've not done an awful lot with it, but sometimes less. There's more. And again, we can see where we've painted and we can then adjust it if we think that's far too much. Example. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so we okay that. I'm going to take another brush. Because this was a long exposure, um, we've got a lot of movement in and around the rocks here from the moving sea. Because we've got 20 seconds, 20 seconds, and 20 seconds. So I just want to raise the exposure the tiniest bit. I want to attack the whites. And all I'm going to do is just brush in, in and around the area here where the movement within the sea is. And again, you can see that making a difference. And it's just painting with light. And along here, and it's only attacking the highlights and the whites, because that's the values that I've set in. And it just makes a little bit of, little bit of interest and a little bit texture in the photograph. Now again, if we want to see where we have painted, that's where we painted and we can adjust this quite dramatically once we're done. But we settle on where we think it's right and I think that is right. Now, because this was a long exposure taken at 20 seconds, 20 seconds and 20 seconds, the light was falling quite quickly. So I actually think the left hand side of this is actually a little bit too dark. So graduated filter and we can drag this from left to right. Now what I want to do here is I actually want to affect the left hand side, that area there, by raising the exposure to try and bring it in line to the right hand side. So this is just trial and error. So exposure and I'm going to raise this ever so slightly until I get it round about right. Now I think that is probably around about right. So my last chance to attack the highlights, the shadows, the whites and the blacks is looking at the tone curve here. So from top to bottom, highlights. I'm going to raise this a little bit just to give some punch in the sky. 
The lights I'm going to take up a little bit, tiny bit just there. The darks I'm going to raise just a touch. And then the shadows I will take down a little bit. But when I take the shadows it makes these very black. So back up to blacks and I just remove some of the black darkness by the black tool. Okay. That I think is my tone curve. So I'm going to do one more brush and I'm going to just show you what I'm doing here. It's because this is a long exposure. I want to just add some some texture to the sea here. So I'm just going to brush in very randomly some effect. So if I look at affecting what I've done, it's quite random. But what I want to do is just raise this a touch, raise this a touch, and I'm going to take the clarity out of it. And to me, I think that just adds something. I'm going to done that. Individual colours. So down here we've got the hue, the saturation and the luminance open. Orange is quite a dominant colour here, so I'm going to increase the saturation of the orange a little bit, but that's too much. I don't want to take this up to the top to make this look like a cartoon. I want to get this back to how it was when I took it. So I'll go down to luminance here and I'll just up the luminance of the orange just a little bit just to soften it off. I'm going to go to magenta and I'm going to take the saturation up just a little bit, which is a global adjustment, but I'm actually going to take the luminance up as well to make it a little bit more subtle. There we are. I want to take the red for the ship because I don't think that pops quite enough, so saturation for reds up and that's it starting to be quite striking now I think. Now we've got blues, greens and aqua in the sea so let me just play around with the blues, the greens and aquas to see what I can do in the sea. Okay now we're getting there I think though that the global adjustment of the exposure is just a little bit too dark still and I'll show you why I think that. The last thing I'm going to do, or would normally do, is I would normally add a vignette to the image. But the vignette is actually quite a, quite a harsh tool, even if you feather it off. And you can see it's been done. So if you can see it's been done, it doesn't work. So let me just Command Z that and reset that. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a vignette using a radial filter, which is a much more subtle tool. So make it quite big make it quite big and we'll just drag this into place. Now I want to make this a little bit unusual so I'm going to angle this off. I'm going to make it even bigger and outside the mask. I don't want to affect the stuff inside the mask but just for the purposes of showing what I want to remain normal. That's the stuff I want to not be affected by this last filter. So I'm going to drag this out a little bit, hover over this and I'm going to move this down just a little bit. So I want that stuff there that's in red to be left unaffected. Click this off to affect stuff outside here. And then I'm just going to reduce the exposure a little bit. And you can see that's only affecting the stuff outside that last filter. Okay, that's looking pretty punchy actually. I like that. What I'm going to do up to the top clarity just up tiniest bit another click there we are and the exposure so this is just fine tuning now the one thing to do before you come out of here or save it always remove your chromatic aberrations that removes any aberrations from small detail such as the ship and the ship's mast and also always enable your profile corrections within your lens to get rid of lens barrel distortions etc so I think that's us about right, because we're going to do the uh, sharpening in Photoshop, make sure that the sharpening is off by going down to the left, and we'll take this up into the library module, and we'll go to export, and when we go to export, your menu will give you the option to open this up in Photoshop, so we will export that, we'll overwrite that. Now this is going to take some time, because we've got a 70 megabyte, 70 megabyte and a 70 megabyte image all merged together plus HDR extraction. 
So this is going to take a little bit of time. So we will see in a few seconds just into Photoshop. Okay, so that's us now into Photoshop. And the two things that I do in here is the first thing is I sharpen everything that I work on in Photoshop. So the Photoshop filter menu reveals the sharpen menu and the sharpen tool that I use is Smart Sharpen because Smart Sharpen gives you full control over the amount, the radius and the reduction of noise. So if we select an area here, let's just use the rocks and we'll make this slightly smaller so we can get a better picture of what's happening. With the amount, obviously down to the left at zero, sharpness is off. We don't want to go to the top because it makes it too garish and pretty horrible. So we need to try and lower this to a stage that we're happy with it, both in this window and in the image itself. So I'm just going to raise this a little bit. And I think that's probably round about it at 340. The radius is the amount of number of pixels within the sharpening tool. And that's like a cartoon, so we don't want that. Radius zero is sharpening off. And again, raise this somewhere between five and 10, depending on your image, where it should be starting to pop, but not be too much. So let me take this up, take this up. And I'm probably going to stop around about there, 4.8. Noise reduction is the amount of noise reduction within the sharpening and the sharpening only. And always just take that up a little bit to get rid of any pixelation within the sharpening you've just applied. Now I'm going to push OK and this is going to apply the sharp settings that I've given this. You can see it's applying the smart sharpen filter here. Now this is going to take an absolute age to do and I will show you in a second why. Now, goodness me, that, that actually took an eternity. And here is the reason why. If we go up to image and look at image size, because this is a three shot panel, the size of this image is 591.8 megabytes. And the size in pixels is 13,200 by almost 8,000. Now that probably works out to be about 105 megapixel image. So it's a massive image, hence the reason it took so long, but you've just got to be patient if you're working with multi-shot panels in particular. It will take a while as it sharpens your image. Now, last thing, up to image again. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a canvas. So canvas size. So what I do for my Flickr photographs and for my website is I put three canvases around them just to say, look, I'm happy with the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick this off and do 0 0.6, 0 0.6 in white. This will place a very small, thin border around here. I'm going to take another one, canvas size, and I take 10% of that. And I will pick out a colour in the photograph, rather than just go with black. It's a very dark brown. We'll go with that, apply this. You won't see this just now, but you will see this in a second when I apply the third one, so canvas size. And I'll go just a cool 10, just a cool 10, make this one white, the last thing that we do when we're in Photoshop is we look for dust in the sky, particularly you'll see it quite obviously, but because this is a new camera, I shouldn't have any dust and I don't. Okay, that's just been right through Lightroom and through Photoshop, looking at my complete workflow from start to finish. Now, I always go from top to bottom every time, and that way my work look and my workflow is consistent from photograph to photograph. And what I would say to you is that once you determine what your workflow will be and what that will look like, that will determine how your photographs feel and how they look. Now, the takeaway from me tonight is always be prepared to take a photograph with something that's not necessarily your primary setup. Take a photograph with whatever you can. Sometimes a photograph taken with whatever you've got with you is better than 
no photograph at all. In fact, every time you take a photograph with something, that's better, surely, than not taking a photograph at all. When you're in the taking photographs, in particular landscapes, sometimes you're provided real opportunities to take some really cool stuff, which was exactly what happened to me tonight. Sometimes you create your own luck by having a camera with you, but sometimes, sometimes you just get lucky. Until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio. Like the legend of the phoenix, huh. all ends with beginnings. What keeps the planet spinning? Ah, uh, the force of the.